hi again. Uh, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to Neil and Louise McMillan for doing last Friday's uh, message. Uh, I've got this feeling that maybe we'll be seeing them again soon. Uh, a big thank you to, to them both. The government announced uh, yesterday the further easing of the lockdown measures and although we may notice some difference in our day-to-day -day lives, within our church lives, maybe not so much to begin with. We'll still not be using our church buildings so we'll not be back for worship and we'll not be holding funeral services or weddings uh, in uh, our church buildings. But there is some kind of progress. There will be greater flexibility perhaps to do some kind of uh, pastoral work and visitation, uh, although observing uh, social distancing measures. And also uh, it has been announced that from the 29th of June that we can conduct wedding services again, albeit outside and with a limited number of people. In fact, the last time I was in this spot, it was to conduct a wedding service. But the situation was very different to what it is uh, tonight. Because normally this is a place uh, that is just full of visitors during uh, the tourist season. So when conducting the service, the major challenge was not the midges, like I'm uh, feeling tonight, but it was visitors who would be coming and sometimes interrupting the service to ask if it was a real service, or even coming up to congratulate the couples in the middle of the service uh, ceremony. Uh, much sometimes to the amusement and sometimes to the annoyance of the uh, bride and uh, groom. If you'd said to me back then that it would be like this in the middle of June, with not a car or a person in sight, I really wouldn't have believed you. Somebody sent to me last week a, a clip. It was a, a clip of a, a comic known as Michael McIntyre. Some of you will be familiar with him. And what it did was it was trying to imagine uh, him being told what the future was going to be like last year. So in 2019, someone telling him what it would be like in 2020. And they said to him, you'll no longer be a comedian. You're going to be a, a kind of substitute teacher and a part-time hairdresser. Your uniform will be tracky bottoms and the t-shirt that you wore to bed the night before. Uh, you will find that your friends don't want to come within two metres of you. You'll be in a shop looking very nervous with a mask on and gloves. You'll have loads of meetings but they'll be in your kitchen and you'll begin every meeting by saying, Can you hear me? I can see you. Can you hear me? And you will sign off every single email with the words, stay safe. The idea was you would never believe it. If we'd been told last year what we are facing now, we wouldn't have believed it. I also was given another video clip. And that was of an artist who was uh, painting something, but using spray paints. And to begin with, when started using the spray paints, the, every move seemed to be very deliberate. But on the canvas, what you could see was just a mess. It seemed like chaos. But with each stroke of paint, with each spray of paint on the canvas, bit by bit you saw things beginning to take shape. And as it came near the end, suddenly what you saw was that there was this kind of moonlight uh, escape. There was a cityscape where buildings and stuff began to become uh, evident. And then at the very end, it really was the most fantastic piece uh, of art. Now, it may sound like if I'm rambling here and really not making much sense, but there is a point to this. Neil mentioned last week about how he and I used to study in Glasgow. And when I was in Glasgow studying, I used to love going off to the chapel. And uh, there I would spend maybe an hour reading uh, my Bible. I, I loved reading the epistles, but it's really where I enjoyed, particularly reading uh, some of the minor prophets from the Old Testament. And particularly I grew fond of the book of Habakkuk. Now in the book of Habakkuk, what you have is Habakkuk looking around and everything seems dark and chaotic and confusing. And he's trying to work out what is going on. But God comes and says to him, look, I'm doing something amazing. I'm doing something great that even if I was to tell you, you would not believe it. Right at the heart of that book, there is 
a, a particular verse, a, a, a statement that really is the theme of the whole book, which is the just will live by faith. And what God was saying to Habakkuk and to the children of Israel is I know things are happening now, things that look chaotic and a bit confusing, but I want you day by day just to live in faith trusting in me and believing in me eh, as the, the great painter and artist who is making eh, on this canvas something that's going to be spectacular and beautiful. The just will live by faith. A couple of weeks ago and then again eh, earlier today, we had eh, a webinar with a lot of the ministers eh, throughout the denomination. And it really was quite fantastic to hear people talking about the things that are going on in their local communities, in their congregations, the opportunities that are arising to share the gospel, people who are showing interest in uh, Christ and in uh, spiritual things like maybe uh, they haven't done for a long time, to hear about the works that are going on, especially things like Christianity Explored groups where people were tuning into that with lots of questions uh, uh, about faith and about about uh, Jesus. Uh, really wonderful stuff. And what it, uh, it strikes me was that God is at work. Things are happening. And we have to just put our faith in him. Maybe he is saying to us, even if I was to tell you everything that is going on, you wouldn't believe it. But what I'm asking is that you live by faith, trusting as you watch in faith the unfolding of the future. And as you watch with praise the painting of that great canvas, waiting and anticipating to see the wonderful picture that will be there at the end. That, I think, is what God is asking us uh, to do, simply to trust him and to live by faith and watch in wonder at the great things that he is doing. When Habakkuk comes to the end of uh, that uh, particular uh, book, he, he makes a great statement of faith because he doesn't pretend that things are going to be easy and simple. They're not. But what he says is this. He says, Even although the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes in the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll be joyful in God my Saviour, for the Sovereign Lord is my strength. Right now, what we have to do is keep exercising this faith in our God and to find our joy, not in the circumstances, which, let's face it, still are a bit confusing and a bit dark at times, but we find our joy in the Lord himself, trusting in him as he unfolds the future and as he paints this wonderful picture before us. We simply trust in him, find our joy in him, and we will discover day by day that it is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Take care, God bless, and we'll speak again soon.